Your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. A damning new report has shone a light on the dismal state of Tasmania's housing crisis. Anglicare Tasmania today revealing the number of private rentals available is the lowest it's seen in seven years and says it's impacting the most vulnerable members of the community. An annual snapshot revealing some dire results. So this year we only found uh, just over a thousand properties um, for rent on the weekend of our snapshot and of them only 200 of them were affordable if you're on an income support and about 460 were affordable if you were on minimum wage. The definition of affordable means people are paying no more than 30% of their income towards rent. The number of affordable properties is the worst Anglicare has seen since its survey started seven years ago. It's impacting on the people on the lowest incomes mostly, so it's anyone on income support, um, but we're also seeing um, more and more people on minimum wage um, having difficulty finding somewhere to rent. Homelessness services still pushed to their limits. So over the last two years we've seen a 33% increase in people accessing services and not being able to receive the assistance that they need. Um, people come to homelessness services seeking somewhere to live and in this environment it's very difficult to be able to achieve that outcome. While many seniors on a pension are resorting to alternative living options. People over the age of 65 as well are finding it a significant issue. The housing stock is not necessarily appropriate for them. If it's a struggle to even have a home to live in, how can you get um, in-home support for, for care as well? The only option is to share house and that is appropriate for a number of people but there are a number of other individuals that this is just not a viable option. These organisations now continuing their push for more government funding into housing. We've got population growth, uh, there's stress in our housing market, that's why we're responding with an unprecedented um, affordable housing strategy which is funded and importantly will deliver more homes for those in need. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The Australian Medical Association is calling for calm tonight as debate over the state of Tasmania's health system reaches boiling point. Labor says it has lost confidence in Michael Ferguson, but the Premier is confident he has the numbers to avoid a ministerial crisis. Parliament resumes tomorrow and all eyes will be on Maverick Speaker Sue Hickey. A no-confidence motion from Labor against the Health Minister set to test the government on the parliamentary floor once again. But the Premier insists he has the numbers after meeting with Miss Hickey this morning. The Opposition parties will use Parliament as political playtime. They do it every single week. They're going to do it again. They've given us advance notice this time, which is an extraordinary move in itself. Um, but they're just taking their antics to the next level. He says the Speaker has guaranteed supply and confidence in the past and expects nothing will change when debate gets underway. It comes as the AMA urges all sides to stop the populist politics. Dr Frank Nicholson says there are no quick fixes in the health system and changing the minister won't solve problems of increasing demand and rising costs. What needs to be done is the identification from Treasury, from Treasury of the budget that is required to open up 300 extra beds around the state, so statewide, and to recruit the staff, nursing staff and doctors to, to look after them. It wants Michael Ferguson to invite Labor to an upcoming health forum. The minister says he's open to the idea. That's really good news, really happy to hear that and it, it suggests that there is an understanding of the complexity of the problem and the need for all the best heads to be in the room. Meanwhile the government will be hoping for some new allies in the upper house after Saturday's elections. It's making a second attempt at passing mandatory sentencing laws for child sex offenders and those who assault off-duty police officers. The people of Tasmania want to see this get through our parliament. They voted for it on two occasions in a state election uh, when they elected a Hodgman Liberal government. Labor was unavailable for interview. Andrew McCarthy, 7 Tasmania News. The search for a missing Tasmanian teenager is entering its fourth day. 16-year-old Aidan Fry was last seen on Cameron Street in Launceston on Friday afternoon. He was wearing a blue flannelette top, a grey hoodie and pale blue jeans. Police say he could be with someone who is known to him. Anyone with information should contact police.
An area of bushland in Chigwell has been declared a crime scene as investigations continue today into the recovery of stolen property. Tasmania Police closing the roads leading to the remote area as officers examined a white Nissan Pulsar patrol stolen from Berrydale on Saturday. A John Deere ATV stolen from Montrose on April 18 was also recovered. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. One of Tasmania's oldest and most iconic football venues is now officially female friendly with North Hobart Oval unveiling its new change rooms today. Five female rooms have been installed across the grounds, three stand grandstands. We've seen an explosion in um, female football participation in the last few years and, and with that comes a really good challenge in that our facilities now need to catch up with that. It sends the message to people that we've, we're, everyone's welcome, everyone's welcome to play footy uh, and, and sport, so having the, the right facilities is an important part of that message. The half a million dollar project is part of the state government's levelling the playing field initiative with Hobart City Council and AFL Tasmania contributing $75,000 each. Tasmania has moved into third place in Comsec's quarterly State of the States report, getting the tick of approval from Chief Economist Craig James for population growth, economic growth and new housing builds. But it wasn't all good news with concerns the unemployment rate sits at 6.5% in trend terms, well above the national average. The nation's best performing economies are Victoria and New South Wales, while the Northern Territory is ranked last. Lord at our gun, Sam Siggins says he's loving life back in the red and black after returning to his junior club with a side undefeated after five rounds. On North Launceston faced the daunting task of Glenorchy this weekend, coming off their first loss of the season. Siggins left Lauderdale in 2016 after a highly publicised spat with coach Darren Winter, transferring to Clarence before a stint in the Geelong Football League. But following another standout performance for the Southern Bombers over the weekend, he says he couldn't be happier to be back at his junior club. It's a bit weird playing midfield. Um, I've I haven't played it since I was about 15, but um, yeah, I've loved every minute of it. It's, um, yeah, it's certainly a lot different, but it gives me a lot of freedom around the ground. And despite dishing the reigning premiers their first loss of the season, Siggins says talk of early flag favouritism isn't distracting Lauderdale from the task at hand. We're under no illusions that um, it's round five and um, it's a long year, but to get a win over North Lonnie, seeing as though we haven't been in for a long time, um, is obviously satisfying. The group we've got at the moment is in a really good position to obviously contend uh, for a premiership. Um, and we're realistic about that, that's what we want to do. Facing the very strong possibility of back-to-back -back defeats up against an undefeated Glenorchy outfit this Saturday, the North Launceston coach says it isn't quite panic stations at the club just yet. Coming off a loss, I guess you've got to take and learn as much as you can from it. Uh, wins gloss over some of the things that you haven't been doing well. I said at the start of the year that it's going to take us three quarters of the year to get the footy that we want. We've got you know, 10 to 12 new players within our senior group that have to learn what, what it's like to play TSL senior footy. The Northern Bombers host Glenorchy at 5.30 this Saturday with Lauderdale getting the weekend off before a top of the table clash with the Pies in round seven. And the votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after round five with Glenorchy's John Geard named best on ground for the Pies Anzac Day win over the Tigers at KG5. Sam Siggins notching up the three votes during Lauderdale's come from behind win over North Launceston on Saturday. In Launceston's Fletcher Seymour was a standout in the Blues' hard-fought win over Clarence at Blunston Arena. It's at the leaderboard and Siggins now joins Aidan Grace at the top with six votes, with several of the competition's best breathing down their necks on five. Tasmanian Steve Glennie has taken a slim early lead in Targa Tasmania. The Lotus driver thrilled crowds lining the streets in Georgetown, finishing one second clear of the reigning champions on the opening day of the series. It may have only been the prologue, but these dream machines gave it everything they had. Launceston Steve Glennie and co-driver Dennis Sims showed how well they knew these roads, clocking the fastest time of the day. They edged out reigning champions Jason and John White, along with fellow Lotus driver Paul Stokel. Sets of eyes were at every vantage point in Georgetown, snapping the speed machines. 
The drivers trumpeted their arrival loudly, producing a petrol-powered melody from the range of different makes and models. Even a ute took part. And that's the beauty of Targa, according to this Queensland couple new to the series. I must admit we got bitten by the Targa bug in Great Barrier Reef and um, yeah, signed up pretty much as soon as we got home for Tasmania. It was a golden day out in their 1970 Ford Escort. Some wanted to make sure they could relive it later. We've got uh, some on the front windscreen, some in the back, some facing back. This is all about fun for us. Another big part of Targa is the sponsors, with each brand just trying to get a glimpse of their product on the nightly news. Or you could just paint your car in colours so bright you can't miss it. We've done it before in this about five times and in a Mazda RX-7 about six times. It's a bit quieter and it's also a lot slower. Yeah. So as we get older, it's better to be in this one than, uh, than another one. The cars have a temporary home at the Silverdome. <laughs> Last night, car lovers flocked to the public expo. Even Tiger's Kings were there. Eight-time champions Jim Richards and Barry Oliver. Luxury manufacturers were everywhere you looked and across all eras, from the newest Dodge to the oldest. This one's run for more than 80 years. The public will have another chance to see the cars at the Silverdome on Wednesday night before another event is held at Mac 2 in Hobart on Friday from 6pm. For the drivers, they return to racing in the northwest tomorrow. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Oh, he loves he loves his cups of tea, uh, Tommy Johnson Joe. Always an exciting time when Target's in town. Sure is, isn't it? All right, thanks so much for that, Tom. Good evening. Now, Fingal, the strange accolade of being the coldest and warmest place today, starting out at minus two, warming up to the state's top of 20, shared with Campania and St Helens. Hobart and Launceston, 19 degrees. Burnley and Devonport, 16. Mostly fine and sunny too, apart from a light shower over the west. Friendly beaches and ooze, 19 degrees. Grove, 18. Lyawini and Flinders Island 17, King Island and Low Head 16 today and Strawn 15 degrees. The northwesterly airstream brought the cloud to the west and through Bass Strait today, just a spattering of a shower or two along the west coast. That's all part of a larger cloud mass over the southern ocean to our west. A frontal band extends over southern WA. An upper level jet stream has cloud over northern Australia. Tomorrow the high positions over the Tasman Sea while the cold front and embedded low move our way. The next high not far behind. The winds mostly northwest to northeast increasing to 15 to 25 knots and even 30 knots over the west and south swells back down under three metres. A strong wind warning from St Helens Point to Wineglass Bay has been issued and also from South East Cape to Sandy Cape. Tuesday in Hobart, a top of 23 and mostly sunny. Looking good, mostly sunny too for Adventure Bay and Taralea, but a tad cooler. 19 the high for Launceston, possible morning drizzle clearing. 18 the top for Devonport, similar conditions and the same for Bridport. Burnie, morning drizzle and 18 degrees, 22 the high for Strawn, fine but partly cloudy, Marawar sunny and 17, 19 the top for St Helens, Swansea 21, white mark on Flinders 20, all fine. On Wednesday, showers developing over the north and west late morning, extending throughout during the afternoon. Agfest and Targa both battling the showers on Thursday, tending to rain over the northwest and showers again on Friday with northeast to northwesterly winds. Partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow. An evening shower forecast for Adelaide, mostly sunny weather for Melbourne and Sydney and a shower further up the coast in Brisbane and northern Queensland. And a little bit of cloud about here, 12 degrees in Hobart, 12 degrees in Launceston and 13 right now in Devonport. Yes, Joe, with Targa and Agfest on this week, it's going to be very hard to keep the bad weather at bay. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, well, gumboot time. Thanks very much for that, Murph. That's all from the team for now. Have a lovely evening, stay warm, and I'll see you again a little later with updates. Bye. -bye.